Johannes Ecolampadius de Gaudio Resurrectionis, Episode 7. Christus, Spes Nostra, Vita Nostra, Resurrectio Nostra, Resurrexit, affert que secum ingens Gaudium, non momentardrium aliquad, quod vel latens adulteret amaratudo, vel aeternus brevi luctus occupet, sed durabile, sed sincerum, sed quod nemo queat offerdre, sed quod prae nuncium aeternae felicitatis. As he continues, Ecolampadius says, Christ, our hope, our life, our resurrection, resurrectio nostra, rose again, resurrects it. So we have Christus here in the masculine, singular, and nominative as the subject. Then we have what I would call appositional phrases, appositives, space nostra, feminine, singular, and nominative, vita nostra, feminine, singular, nominative, and resurrectio nostra, same gender number case. We then have the verb resurrexit. This is from resurgo, resurgere, which is third conjugation, and of course resurrected then is third singular. It's perfect, indicative, and active. That's how to parse it. Person number tense, mood, and voice. Christ our hope, our life, our resurrection, he rose again. Then he says, affertque, and he brought with him affertque secum. So affert here is from affere, which is a third conjugation irregular verb. Here it's in the present tense. And then we have this, secum. So we have this character here, which is the S. And then we have the character here, the U, with the mark over it. This is a ligature for secum, like so. And then in gains is what this is. And finally, gaudium. In order to save characters, the typesetter had characters like this, this U, which equals UM in these instances, or had the E in ingains, which equals EN. So he says, and he brings with him, Christ does, ingains gaudium, a very large joy, a massive amount of joy. This is neuter, singular, and accusative, the object of the verb affert. Not some momentary, not something momentary, momentarium aliquad. This is also neuter singular accusative in apposition to gaudium. Not something momentary, which, quad. Then we have, well, latens adulteret amaratudo, and well, aeternus brevi luctus occupet. I should actually say for this occupet, because the u is short, like so, and therefore the stress goes back to the antepenalt, occupet. So he brings with himself massive joy, not something momentary, which either a latens amaratudo, latens amaratudo is feminine singular and nominative because it's the subject of adulteret, which neither a latent or a hidden bitterness can corrupt adulteret, or that aeternus luctus, that a lasting sorrow could seize in a moment, brevi. So we have here this relative clause, quad, and it has two parts or members, well, amaratudo, like so, and well, occupet, like this, modifying momentarium oliquad. That is, Christ brings with himself a massive joy, not something momentary, quod, that a secret bitterness could corrupt, a dual tourette. So this is a third singular, it's a present subjunctive active, and it's from the first conjugation verb adultero adulterare, which means to corrupt or spoil. We have similar here, third singular present subjunctive active, the verb occupo occupare, which means to seize or lay hold of. So a hidden or a latent bitterness can't corrupt it, and some everlasting struggle, aeternus luctus, masculine, singular, and nominative as the subject of occupet, cannot overwhelm it. Quod is the object of both of these verbs, and it is neuter, singular, and accusative, therefore. So, not something momentary, said, but it is something durabile, lasting, but it is something genuine, sincerum. So these I take as both neuter, singular, and accusative, and they go back to 
the gaudium, which is accusative as objective affert, but something which, quote, no one can take away, nemo quiet afferdre. So nemo here the subject, clearly masculine singular nominative. Quiat is a synonym of posse. So queo and possum, these are synonyms. Here it's in the third singular present subjunctive active. So Christ brings it, affert, and nobody can take it away, afferdre. And finally, said quod, but something that is a praenuncium, a praenuncium or a praenuntium. I should probably say praenuncium, because that's how it would have been pronounced at the time in the 16th century. This is a foremessage, a foreshadowing from nuntio, a message or announcement. This also is neuter, singular, and accusative, but a kind of foretelling or uh, first fruit, you might say, aeternae felicitatis, of eternal happiness, this feminine singular and genitive. Thank you so much for watching this free video. I hope that you learned a lot about the classical languages and advanced your knowledge and enjoyment. You can help us keep going with this instruction if you like this video and subscribe to the channel. We've had hundreds of thousands of views in the last nine years, and we would really like to grow our number of subscribers. If you hit the little bell, you will be notified every time we release a brand new free instructional video. You can also check out one of my Latin or Greek courses at latinperdm.com or mossmethod.com. Check the links if you'd like to study Latin and Greek with me directly. So keep learning and vale tote omnes.